Hey there, and welcome to LFF. My name is Matt Mirage. If this is the first time you're joining us here on the channel, be sure to get subscribed because uh, each and every Friday we're gonna be here and we're gonna be chatting about something, large format photography. Today I'm here in Howard, Ohio, which is an hour-ish from the Columbus area, about northeast from there. We're off State Route 62, and today I'm visiting Honey Run Falls. I've never been here before, so it should be interesting because it is cold. There's a ton of rain behind me. It is god-awful icy, but we got a little bit of fog coming in, and I'm doing not like your normal field work episode. I'm doing a bit of a field test, and I'm traveling super slim today because I'm only working with a single piece of glass. So I've got my tripod here. <laughs> I've actually got my camera out in the open right here. Maybe a camera bag would have been better, but anyway, let's hike down. It should be a relatively short hike, and we'll get to the falls, and we'll set up, and I'll tell you what I'm testing. Oh my goodness, it is slippery. So my one critical error this morning is I left my yak tracks at home. Uh, those are like my spikes for grip. I did not see all this ice coming, but we're here, might as well shoot. Not too far from here. Oh wow, there is a ton of water right now. My goodness. Oh wow, these falls are absolutely roaring this morning. Jeez. So the falls are still a little bit frozen and that water is just rushing right over them. Whew, uh, we're, we're gonna try to make this work. Not very long exposures today, lots of flow. So because these falls are so darn loud with all this rushing water, I'm actually gonna set the camera up a little bit further away so we can talk about what we're doing today. So today I'm trying something a bit different. We are doing a field test. What this means is, well, I've never been to this location before. This is my first time here and I don't really know what to expect. And in addition to that, I'm gonna use this as an excuse to test out a new piece of gear. Today I'm gonna to be testing out this, uh, this interesting lens which came into the shop, so Midwest Photo, and I had to try it out because I've heard about these for years and never used one before. And this is a triple convertible lens. So I only brought my camera without the bag because yeah, I'm just gonna have one lens on here the whole time. This is a B&L or Bosch & Lom Zeiss Protar. This is a Series 7 lens, and it has three focal lengths in one lens. So we have a 10-inch configuration, which is the front and the rear elements combined make a 250 millimeter-ish lens. We have a 16-inch configuration where we use the front element only, and a 19-inch configuration where we remove the front element and we use the rear element only. This does change my aperture. That's why there's several different aperture scales engraved into this. And yeah, we're gonna try out all three looks on the camera here at the falls. So I had to heavily, heavily turn down the gain on this microphone because the falls are right there. Uh, but we're gonna do the warm up shot kind of overhead. I'm gonna use this convertible lens in its widest configuration. And that is a 10 inch. 10 inches isn't that wide angle. It's like a 35 millimeter-ish equivalent on eight by 10. Uh, 250 on four by five is a little bit longer and it's uh, a little bit longer than standard on five by seven, just for reference. This particular lens does come on this Linhoff Technica style board and the normal board configuration for my Tachihara is a Sinar board. For that, a few years ago, I picked up this Luland Technica to Sinar adapter. It's not the tightest fitting thing in the world, but it does have some black felt right here so I can do what I need to do. I'm gonna pop that on. Let's add our lens. Now this style of convertible lens was really, really popular, oh, close to a hundred years ago. Some of the earliest large and ultra large format cameras have these type lenses available. Now, that being said, there's very few modern types of these lenses around. The most common you're gonna find are gonna be like Bosch and Lom, Turner Reich, 
A lot of folks got in on this because they were easy to design, very simple lenses. By the time you get it down to the longer focal lengths, you may only be dealing with one or two individual lens elements. That means that these aren't going to be the sharpest things in the world, but for print sizes where we're doing contact printing, that's great. These will not hold up to enlargement scrutiny. Now, this is an older Acme style shutter. These can sometimes get really gummed up. This one happens to be a good copy. It has bulb and time, which is awesome. So I can just open up my lens to do all of my previewing. We're keeping it really trim, really simple today. All right. Oh yeah, lots of water today. All right, let's see what we're looking at here. I did bring my loop. This is gonna help significantly. I may do a little bit of swing here. So to do the swing, I'm gonna focus to my far, which is my falls right there. Unlock my front standard and just do a little swing towards that mirror, which is the tree. Now, in terms of exposure, I'm gonna want my f-stop high enough that I can get a prolonged exposure, but with how hazy it is, I'm not too worried about that. I'm gonna be able to get plenty of falls action. Um, and I'm probably not going to shoot this lens super wide open. I'm going to aim for like 16, 22, maybe even 32. So I'm going to stop my lens down. I've got the Raveni here. Bring this up. There we go. All right. I'm in zone metering mode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the deepest shadow I want detail on like a, today being really hazy, I'm going to place that on zone four, not zone three. So it's telling me that I need 0.3 seconds at f22. I think that sounds about right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 0.3, we're going to go to f22 and a half, and instead of that 0.3 seconds, I'm going to round it up to one second. The film I'm using today, by the way, is Ilford Delta 100, the one we tested last spring. I'm still going through my boxes of that, and I really feel like I'm starting to get results uh, that are repeatable and that I like out of it. And that's an important thing when you're shooting film. Stick with an emulsion for a while and really get to know it. I'm also gonna check my highlight values. There are some pieces of ice alongside the flowing water, and I wanna place that ice around zone seven. So uh, this is gonna help me figure out what my processing is gonna be. So the difference in exposure value between my darkest shadow and my brightest highlight is only about three f-stops. When I have a much flatter scene like that, there's two things we can do. We can underexpose in camera, but that risks giving us a thinner negative. The easier thing to do is to mark my film holder for N plus one or expanded contrast. This is developing the film longer to compensate and increase that contrast. Okay, F22 and a half. Let's set our exposure to one second. Cock it, give it a test fire. You know what, we might do a bulb exposure just to make sure, eh, no, we should be all right. Okay, cool. Let's bring in our film. I've already marked with my green sticker for my N plus one development. Make sure everything's locked. There we go. Now for the second shot, I'm not exactly in like what I would consider the ideal position, but any further than this, and it's gonna get really treacherous with too much ice on these rocks and without grips, I am not gonna chance it on the rock, especially with the video, yeah, you know, it's risky. So, you know, be safe when you're doing this. All right, so the sun is just above the frame and it's, it's giving us a little bit of extra contrast. And that thing I love the most that little bit of hint of backlight coming in. And it's setting up a really nice composition where I've got the foreground little bit of riffling right here, as well as the big falls in the back. So far, I'm really liking what I see. All right, start the same way I start everything. I'm gonna find my far focus. All right, got my far focus, the very peak of those falls right there. 
And in this case, I might drop my front standard a bit more. I've got all these foreground rocks and to give me that depth where someone can lead into the shot, I'm just gonna tilt a little bit forward. So I'm finding my far focus and I'm gonna tilt until my near rocks are in sharp focus. So a lot of that haze is already starting to fade away. So I am gonna re-meter. It's probably gonna be close, one to two seconds of exposure, but that's gonna be fine. And again, we're at a half second at F22. I'm gonna go 22 and a half and call that one second. All right, second shot going in. Make sure we're locked down. Everything's looking good here. Cock my lens. All right, here we go. 1,001, 1,002. So now we're gonna pull the camera back a little bit and we're gonna try some longer focal lengths, both the 16 inch and the 19 inch element to see how we can kind of compress our perspective. Oh, there we go, okay. So to convert this lens, all we have to do is just remove one of the elements. Now, depending on uh, what resource you're looking at for these lenses, um, you're gonna get a slightly different result if you use just the front element in front of the shutter versus using it behind the shutter. I'm thinking it's a contrast thing. You might get a little bit less flare if you take this 16 inch element and put that in the back where the 19 inch goes. So if I remove this, so again, this front group is a 16 inch lens. This rear group is a 19 inch lens. And for those of you in the comments that are gonna be like, hey, why aren't you saying this in millimeters? This is a German made lens before there were standards for everything that switched to metric. Uh, the equivalencies are nicely written right here by the former owner, which is pretty cool. 250, 400, and I believe that's supposed to be 475 because the 19 inch is like a 480 ish. Um, so I'm going to convert it to the 16 inch or 400 millimeter equivalent. So to do that, I just have to remove the 19 inch group. There we go. Take that group out and take this front 16 inch group out. Ooh, it's, it's on there. All right. Something interesting I just noticed from the previous owner, when I take this element out, they've added in this kind of rough uh, black tape. That's to help increase that contrast. So I'm gonna pop the 16 inch element in the back here, thread that in carefully. There we go. Pop this on. And then that's my preview button. Press that and open her up. And I'm gonna have to draw the bellows out further because I'm now using a longer focal length lens. So 400 millimeters should be about here. How are we looking? Hey, there we go. Oh, that's so cool. Because I'm increasing my focal length, my bellows draw, but I'm not changing the size of that opening, my f-stop is going to increase, meaning less light is reaching my ground glass. So I went from having a 10 inch F6.3 to a 16 inch F9.9. .9. That's, that's pretty rough and that can get kind of dark. Oh no, I forgot my black jacket. I hope I can't use my black jacket. A lot of things will work as a dark cloth, folks. You don't have to spring for a ton. All right. Perfect. All right, we need to Near focus is looking good. All right. Okay, this time around, I have a lot of foreground that's gonna lead into this background. So I'm gonna try to go pretty high F number. I'm thinking between 45 and 64 is where I wanna be on my exposure. So we're gonna meter this one out, same as we do. There we go. And I'm gonna change that from F22 to F51. This is giving me two seconds. With my reciprocity, I'm gonna round that up closer to four. All right, here we go, two seconds. Bring in the film. All right, ready one, and. 1,001, 1,002, three, four. OK, 
Okay, we're gonna change the focal length to its final form, which is the 19 inch or 475, 480 millimeter. So as I did before, I'm going to unscrew this element. Okay, and we're gonna grab the 19 inch element. There we go, or 18 and, what's that? 18 and 7 eighths, so yeah, 19 inch. Okay, thread that on, lots of threads. It's like, it'll never go. There we go, finally. And now we are no longer at an F9.9, we're at an F11. Crack it back on there. Make sure we're locked. Cock it, preview it, wide open. Uh, so we're back on the bridge that we crossed at the very, very beginning of this show. And uh, this is about far enough back for this perspective. I usually don't use longer lenses on this particular camera because I, as you can see here, I'm almost out of bellows draw. I have maybe two, three inches left and then I'm out. So uh, I have to use this bellows draw sparingly and that also means I can't focus very close. I can pretty much only focus on stuff about 20, 30 feet away and not too much closer. So I got my loop here, check my focus. And in this case, I really want to make sure I have uh, some decent foreground that's going to be in sharp focus. I have the tripod tilted up a bit to kind of raise my perspective. I can also rise the lens. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my tripod head level, well, level-ish. Everything you do with a longer lens is magnified, meaning a very small amount of movement is going to go a long way and what could be a tiny bit of shake reverberates all throughout unless you have proper stability and I'm also on a bridge so I can't go stomping around or else that's going to shake this. Another thing about large format and 8x10 specifically that people don't warn you about is depth of field. Depth of field becomes a liability, kind of like when you're doing macro focusing you have such a shallow depth of field that you're dealing with that often you're gonna need other tricks to manipulate that depth of field. In the case of large format, we have our movements, our rise, our fall, our tilt, our swing, but we can also lean on a higher F number. So things that would be diffraction city in 35 millimeter digital, like F64, F128, just go for it. These are not going to be sharp enough to make big enlargements from anyway. They should look okay on the screen, but nothing to write home about sharpness wise because this is a very simplistic optic that is about a hundred years old. So uh, keep that into consideration when you're looking at convertible lenses. We've got a metered time of two seconds at F64. So we're going to bump that up to just shy of four seconds. Okay, grab some film. Okay, nice. Okay, hold my place. Wait a couple seconds. Ready in. So for this last shot, I've converted the lens back. I've replaced the 16 inch in the front, the 19 inch in the back, and that brings me back to my 10 inch or 250 millimeter base configuration. I have an idea for a wide shot here. We'll see if it pans out. If it doesn't, one sheet of black and white isn't gonna bankrupt me. Same old, same old. I'm gonna focus to my far. All right, I got the falls. And in this case, I wanna swing the lens towards my near, which is gonna be up this way. So I'm gonna unlock my swing, check with my loop. Right there. Not too terrible, okay. Recheck the focus. Far focus is there. Near focus is good there. Yeah, that's where we wanna be. Final meter of the day. Again, I'm going to go for those black rocks in the background. They are the darkest thing that I want to have detail in. So bringing the Reveni up. All right, zone system mode, probe around, try to find that darkest value. So it's not super critical that you line everything up because you can hold down the probe button on this and kind of look to see where that value is reading. So it's, 
and this is reading an EV, so I've got 10.1, oh, 10.0, there we go. 10.0 is pretty dark, 9.9, .9. okay. Place that, zone four, and I'm not gonna be F64, I'm probably gonna be F45, one second. Cool, okay, final shot of the morning. Lock it down, dark slide, drop it in. Nice. Okay, ready in. 1,001, 1,000. Whew, all right. Well, that was something. Drop the big camera bag, one lens, three looks, and six sheets of film. I think we didn't do too bad today. It was definitely a sharp-ish lens. It wasn't soft focus, but it's from a similar era to where soft focus and pictorialist style lenses were still used. This was definitely softer than most of my modern single or triple coated optics, but I think the look's gonna be just fine, especially for black and white. If you're shooting color, this may have a look that uh, you know, increases that chromatic aberration that you're used to not seeing from modern digital or very, very new apochromatic uh, film camera lenses. So just keep that in mind. And if you do want something more modern, well, there is one that's still made new and is available, but it is very expensive. And that would be the Cook XVA. Uh, you can also find the original Cook XV. Now Cook is a British UK optics manufacturer. They specialize in cinematography lenses and they are known for the Cook look. They also have just low key, one of the best cinematography YouTube channels out there. So yeah, just, I'm gonna put the link down there below too. If you have any questions about these triple convertible lenses or you want to share what convertible lens you have, let me know down below in the comments. And for those long form questions, hit me up, largeformatquestions at gmail.com. Thanks again for stopping by and we'll catch you next week for more LFF.